I'm talking about ergonomic mice today. And this is by comparison to standard mice. And standard mice, the way you move it like this and the way your hand is parallel to the surface, the parallel position is called pronation. And it's, it's just bad on your wrist. We really want ideally to be like robotically perpendicular to the surface and our arms 45 degrees. So a standard mouse will develop what's called RSI or CTS. RSI is repetitive stress injury or CTS is carpal tunnel syndrome. And if you're young, if you're a young tech worker, obviously you're not noticing it yet, but it's just a ticking time bomb. People in their 40s and 50s really start to develop, especially the, the longer they work in tech, the longer they use a mouse. A mouse is more important. A keyboard is, I'll show you this in a bit, a, a split ergonomic keyboard with, with tenting helps as well, but a mouse is the most important piece. So I developed RSI. I got it in my thumb, my thumb joint right here, and a little bit in my wrist. Some people get it strongly in their wrist. Some people get it in their elbow. Some get it in their shoulder. Others get it in their, in their fingers and knuckles, but I think it's most common to get it in your wrist and your thumb. And so this, this will give you RSI. It's, I highly recommend everybody move away from a standard mouse, except for maybe when they're gaming. But even, even in the gaming world, there are alternatives. There's something called Game Ball. So here are some ergonomic mice that I own. The most common like, thing people try next, they're like, okay, I got RSI, or I know that I may develop it eventually. So they switch to a vertical mouse. The vertical mouse solves the pronation problem. It gets your hand closer to perpendicular to the surface, but it's still not there. It's all the way there. It's about 45 degrees. It's a lot better, but, and this is actually a really nice one. It's a proto, proto arc. Um, this is a really nice one. The buttons feel really good, really high quality. Uh, there are a few problems. One is you can see these buttons here with my thumb cause my thumb to move in an unnatural position. This is going to cause a lot of pressure on the thumb joint and lead to thumb RSI. But the other thing is that by moving your wrist still, nonetheless, you're not mitigating that, that potential for wrist RSI or elbow or shoulder. So this isn't gonna take you all the way there. It will help, but it won't take you all the way there. So we'll put that aside. The next one is, I'm kind of following the journey that I see a lot of people go on before they finally land on what I call end game, which is the slim blade. The next one people tend to jump to after they've tried the vertical mouse and it didn't really work out for them, are thumb ball mice. This is the Logitech Ergo MX thumb ball mice. And so rather than moving your wrist like this, you move your thumb. You move your thumb on the track. Well, as you can see though, the problem again is we're, we're putting a lot of motion on that thumb joint. So you're very likely to uh, develop or uh, maintain uh, thumb RSI. Also, thumbs, and so the bigger the ball on a trackball mouse, like see this, this Kensington Expert ball is really large. The bigger the ball, the more precision you get out of it. This ball is quite small. And also your thumb has a lot less precision than, than your index finger or your middle finger, which you'll, you'll, you'll be using in one of these finger ball trackball mice. So this will not help with the thumb RSI and you, it'll be less precise. It'll be less accurate of a mouse. Some people still, they really like this one. It's definitely an upgrade from the vertical mouse and definitely an upgrade from a standard mouse, but it's still not quite there. So let's put this one aside. This is a really good mouse. I really like this mouse. It's just, I, I have thumb RSI and it has not helped with the thumb RSI. And so I don't use it. I tried it and it didn't help. I don't use it. Next one people tend to go to are, what, what I have is the, the Kensington Orbit Fusion here. However, I think it's more, the more popular ones that people choose are the, the Deft Pro and the Elecom Huge. They're gonna be better than this one. This is a, a lesser mouse compared to those two in the same sort of form, form factor. That form factor being you do have a finger ball mouse. Now, moving your, your middle finger, your index finger, those joints are a little bit less vulnerable than your thumb joints. So that kind of motion on your thumb when you are moving the, the, the trackball on the Logitech MX Ergo, or you'll see some of these have like a scroll ring right here, is not good for your thumb. It's really unnatural. And it's really, really going to hurt, hurt your thumb joint. But doing it with your middle finger, your index finger, for some reason, just anatomical to our hand, can withstand that kind of motion. 
Further, your index and middle finger have higher precision. We're, we're, we tend to be more accurate when moving the mouse this way than we, do, than we are when moving our thumb. Our thumbs are less accurate for, for fine-tuned, fine tiny micro motions when you really want to get the cursor on the X of the window and then click. Whereas the thumb, you kind of like jet these coarse actions. It's really hard to get a really precise. I mean, you can see my thumb is like... Just look at it. Look at it. When I'm trying to be precise, it's kind of like these jerky motions. But when I'm trying to be precise right here, it's really smooth. Now, what's cool about this is it has a scroll ring. Uh, you'll see that in the Kensington Expert as well. And we want the scroll tool, the, 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 the scroll object, to be index finger, middle finger, and not thumb. Because, again, we really want to move away from this. The... Elcom Huge and the Elcom Def Pro, I believe the, the scroller is on the thumb, so that's a problem. The other thing is the, the clickers here on, the, on this mouse are the thumb. And what's nice about this one is that the, the layout of this is, is closer to what you may be familiar with with standard mice. So it's an easier adjustment. Uh, however, again, with the thumbs, we're not getting all the way towards where we want to be with ergonomics. But some people prefer, some people land here. They get the, the Deft Pro, the, the Elecom Deft Pro or the Elecom Huge, and they land there and they stay there. It's right hand, which most people use. And the, the layout accommodates the right hand in a way that feels more familiar for standard mouse users. Takes us 75, 80% of the way towards a good ergonomic uh, mouse compared to what you were using before. You can see that this is tilted a little bit. So you got that 45 degree, you remove the pronation. You're not, you're not moving your wrist. And even the thumb, even the thumb actions here, you're not like doing this kind of thing like you are with the, with the thumb ball mice. So this is 80% the way there. And some people are like, that's enough. They, they've really solved their RSI and uh, they settle there, especially the deft I'm sorry, the Elecom Huge is just such a, it's a giant, it would take up this entire surface from here to here and here to here. It's a ginormous mouse, but what that, what that allows is a wrist rest on top of the mouse, a huge ball, and a splay of your fingers that feels a little bit more natural for pushing the buttons without like tightening your claw. Now, now the Kensington Expert. This guy, this is not very ergonomic. I'll, I'll talk about this later. This is good for travel. So this is not something I'd recommend for like daily use, but I, I wanna talk about that for travel later. Kensington Expert. This is one you've probably seen a lot of. Now, what's cool about this, fingerball mouse, and the scroll ring is middle finger slash index finger. So that's helping with the thumb. These buttons, so we got, we got normal click, right click, middle click back, okay? You, you've seen these on other mice. So normal click, right click, middle click back. Having those four buttons is really, really nice. Now, you, you sort of claw, you hover your hand over it like Saruman over the Palantir, right? And you just, you push these, it goes thumb, pinky, that finger, index finger, middle finger. You use all your fingers, middle finger for scroll, middle finger for move. Use all your fingers in a hover formation. Even though you are using your thumb, I keep talking about not wanting to use your thumb, you're just pushing it down. You're not doing this. You're just tapping it. Dun, 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 dun. This is as ergonomic as it gets. So ergonomic. And you're going to fix your RSI. My, my RSI has completely, completely gone away. And now, it wasn't just when I switched to this. I, I also moved it to the left. So I, I had developed RSI in my right hand. And what's nice about this, and this, as we'll talk about in a bit, is that this is, on, is ambidextrous. You can use it either on the right side or the left side. And the way to do that, you're going to get this software called Kensington Works, and then you can just remap the keys because you don't want this, you know, you can keep the buttons as they are if you want, where pinky is now normal click, thumb is right click, and just kind of brain map the difference. But it might be easier to mirror the hands in terms of buttons and do that via the software Kensington Works. So I switched to my left hand to give my right hand some, some rest, and sure enough, it did. And I got so used to using my left hand that I only use my left hand now for mouse. And I don't use my right hand at all. And my RSI is completely gone. It took, it took about two or three months. I went left-handed, finger ball. My right hand completely healed. But what will happen is, so, so let's put this aside for now. What will happen is when I'm traveling, so I use this one. This is the Elecom Bitra. Bitra. 
and it's tiny. It is just so tiny. I put it on top of my of my laptop here. It's more ergonomic than than a trackpad. It is more ergonomic than a trackpad. So because I have RSI, when I travel, I bring this too. It's not as ergonomic as the finger balls. Finger ball, right click. Left click is thumb, and then scroll wheel is thumb. That's the problem. That's the big problem. And so what happens is, even though I have healed my RSI by switching to a left hand ambidextrous finger ball slim blade, when I travel and I use this, it starts to act up just a little bit. I will feel it after the course of a week. I will feel my thumb start to act up just a little bit. Not all the way. If I went to a normal mouse, if, if I started using a normal mouse after a week, for a week, uh, my, my RSI would just be through the roof. And I have, I, I, I've actually proven that to myself. That actually happened. So, so the point is, uh, these finger ball mice, they, they really fix your RSI or your CTS. And in a way, but you, you have to stick with them. But, but they fix it. Now, so, okay, so this is the Bitra. This is really good for travel. You just throw it in your pocket. I straight up, I really, I put it in my pocket. And uh, it's, it's really durable for some reason. You turn it on back here. It has a little dongle there, USB-A, Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Do not get the Bluetooth version of this. The Bluetooth is just, the, the accuracy is so bad that if you don't have a USB-A slot for the receiver of the Wi-Fi version, don't buy the product at all. I would not use the Bluetooth product even, even if I had to, I would rather use the, the trackpad. So if you get this for travel only, not for your home you know, battle station, if you get this, only get the USB-A Wi-Fi version. All right, and then that takes us to Endgame, the master mouse. This is called the Kensington Slim Blade. Now, the one I'm going to recommend to you is not this one. It's the Slim Blade Pro. The Slim Blade Pro has an option for wired. However, it also has an option for a USB Wi-Fi receiver and an option for Bluetooth. Now, you may say, I'm, this is gonna be at home, I'm always gonna be wired, I don't need all that. If, if, you, if you definitely know that to be the case, then fine, get, get the standard slim blade with the wire. But the benefit of the options, the, the Bluetooth and the USB-A, wireless receiver is that you don't know maybe you know maybe you'll upgrade computers later and you don't you don't know how you're going to connect to that one and so the the slim blade pro gives you options all three options connectivity options and it's an iterated it's an upgrade of the slim blade itself so a little bit better on the tech i don't you know i can't speak to that myself but i know that they've sort of indicated that there, there's some level to which they've improved on the technology okay the slim blade is just like the kensington expert except the the Keys are bigger, they're bigger, so there's better, there's, you know, you, you're you not gonna like miss. That's really nice. You'd be surprised how, how big of a difference that makes. The keys are bigger. The form factor is flat, fl parallel to the, the surface. Now, I know that I've been saying we wanna get sort of like per perpendicular to the surface, but that would be like this. That would be, that would be the ideal scenario. What you could do is you could tent a mouse using some mods if you want. But um, what I will show you with the split keyboard layout system, um, having your hands way over here, 90 degrees down to your sides, and then you hover over it like this, it sort of, it, it fixes it fixes the issue. It's, it's, it's not nearly as much of an issue as when you're moving a mouse. Now, the scroll ring is really interesting. This one, it has a physical scroll ring that you scroll. This one, you, you, you rotate the ball. It has, can you listen to that? So it has some sort of in indicator, firmware-wise, that we're not, you know, moving the ball around. We are officially rotating it on a static axis. It has some sort of indicator like that, and that's how it scrolls. People, when they first get this, they, they start doing this thumb and thumb and ring finger, pinch and, pinch and move. But eventually you'll move, you'll move to something like this where you sort of like wipe, wipe along the silver ring part. And it's, it's actually really fun. Let me see if I can just, I'm gonna log into my computer and just kind of show you what this would look like. How about this code? So scroll, you can, I mean, there's not much here, but you can sort of like flick it 
you, you throw it in a scroll motion and it'll give you that sort of um, momentum that Mac, Mac users love when they scroll on the trackpad. The other thing is you can throw the ball and get the mouse like across screens really efficiently. Now, when it comes to this being parallel to the surface, this looks like it has something going on ergonomically, right? The, with, with the wedge that gives it some angle. That is not the case. The, the, the angle here is like this, not this, right? So some people have like figured out how to remap First off, they remap the they they position it this way so that you get that forty five degrees where you want it, where your wrist is angled this way. But but then what they have to do is they find these the software that like they they remap the ball to be skewed like ninety degrees or so. And it's really it's just not it's not that fun to do. This is not ergonomic. <laughs> Strangely, it comes with the the Kensington Expert does come with a wrist rest. I, I didn't get one because I got this on eBay that you can put your wrist on that sort of removes the the element of angle in this direction, but it's just so pointless. It's really like, it's worse ergonomically on that layout than it, than it is if it were flat. So yes, this could be a little bit better if it was, you know, angled this way a little bit, um, but flat is better than what this has going on. So Kensington Expert, I recommend again. Against, it is an old model anyway. It's the, the it's sort of the precursor of the Slim Blade. The Slim Blade is their new expert. It's just an upgraded version. And then I recommend getting the Slim Blade Pro. Okay. Now, keyboard. <clears throat> so this is the Mistel Barocco MD770. And it's not necessarily the one I recommend, but it's a really good budget pick. You can see what I'm doing here is I split, the, the keyboard is split down the middle. It's split into two halves. And I added these mods, these little, these little kickstand legs I'll show you a link to, that angle it in a way that you want. That, that sort of angle is a little bit more important with keyboards than it is with mice. Because your mouse hand is way over here, when you're using your keyboard, you come a little bit in towards the middle and you want to get that, you want to get that angle. If this were flat, it would be less ergonomic. First off, the best ergonomic keyboards are always split, split keyboards. You'll see, you'll see other ergonomic keyboards out there that are unified and they have a bit of an angle on the right side angles in and the left side angles in and then there's like a gap in the middle. But what the split keyboard allows you to do is like this amount of gap is, you wouldn't be able to find that amount of gap in a unified keyboard. And so you want, like I said, you want that 90 degrees down here and you want that angle 45 degrees, ideally 90 degrees, but I really haven't found anything that, that accommodates that. And so by having a split keyboard, you can widen that gap as much as your body needs to get that shoulder width apart different. So mine is all the way, all the way, like I, I get it to the point where it's like, if I put it any more, it would fall off the desk. And then this one, the same thing. My mouse is all the way at the end and my keyboard is all the way touching the mouse. And so I, I want the biggest gap possible. If I could go bigger, I would. Now, Mistel Barocco MD770, this is a great keyboard. It is a mechanical keyboard. It is cherry brown switches. So the keyboard itself is really high quality. It does not come with this. So this is called tenting. When you get this angle, they call that tenting, tenting. It does not come with these, so it does not come tented out of the box, unfortunately. You'll have to get these. They're very cheap. It's like $5 on Amazon, and you just like these. You take off the sticker peel, and you affix it to the, to the things, and then you can... It's cool. You can collapse these down then, and you can throw it in your backpack and travel with the, with the keyboard. But what I'm going to recommend is the Glove 80. It's just a better split keyboard. A lot of these newer split keyboards that you can buy have what's called a key well where the keys are sort of dipped inward which is better on the finger knuckles and a lot of keys in this a thumb cluster where you make use of your thumb rather than like strong reaches with your pinky and, and things for like the function keys and the escape key and whatnot and you can remap these these thumb cluster keys to whatever you want for common yeah for common keys or key combinations and whatnot so for a really good ergonomic lay computing environment, I highly recommend the Slim Blade Pro, the Glove 80, not this one, the Glove 80 split keyboard, 
And the, the alternative keyboards, there's, there's something called the ZSA Voyager, the ZSA Moonlander, and the ZSA Ergodox Easy. The Voyager is this really tiny form factor, very portable, but it doesn't have as many keys, can be a little bit tougher for home stations, but better for travel. The Moonlander, I think, is maybe a better pick in that, in that mix of options. There is the Digma Rays and the Digma DeFi. The Digma DeFi is the newer version. It has a better, just a better layout, I think. There is the Kinesis Advantage 360, which is a really, really solid layout. Has a key well, has thumb cluster, if I remember correctly, and has tenting, really, really strong tenting too, so you can get a really steep angle. For me personally, for, for very budget pick, I would pick the Mistel Brago, and for the high quality pick, I'd pick the Glove 80.